All right, all right. How's it going? Today I want to talk about video in Webflow. We'll get into some advanced topics if you want to host video externally because you got longer video or more beautiful video or you want to work with audio, just all sorts of different things if you want to play and pause on scroll. So I've got this little setup right here. Uh, let me just enable this here so we can see what's going on. A refresh. So the video's playing. It's on autoplay, but it's muted. Browsers really want users to interact with the video to um, before they hear sound, which is a good thing. But most a lot of clients don't know that. And then I'm going to scroll. And as I'm scrolling, you'll see this video down below. It's just the same one. It's going to start playing, and the video up top will stop when I'm at about tw when it's about twenty percent. Yep, there it goes. And this one's playing just again, and then we'll get it to stop when it scrolls out of view. And like I said, we'll talk about clicking. Um, to play and pause as well. And when you click, we'll be able to enable audio. Okay, just because I don't want these to play in the background while we're going. Uh, okay, so these are paused now. First thing I wanna show you is how to get this into Dropbox and then onto your Webflow project. So my client sent me this really nice sizzle reel. Uh, she's a real estate agent in Chicago but her videographer sent me a 220 megabyte file and we need to compress that quite a bit. Uh, so I just ran this through Handbrake, which is a free program. It's this one right here. I just did the default settings. I did this general fast 1080, 1080p uh, 30 frames per second and I checked web optimized and that got it down to 76 megabytes right here. And you can tell a little bit of a difference. Like, uh, 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 yeah, this one's definitely crispier, but I think it's good enough for web. And, you know, if I showed you um, what we looked at in the demo, I think it's definitely good enough. And then the other thing, if you're using this in Webflow, the file size limit for Webflow is 30 megabytes. So compressing this down to 30 megabytes was way too grainy and just looked pretty awful. So we're going to host this somewhere else. And something I see a lot of people use is Dropbox. So we'll go with that for now. I've got my compressed file right here, and I've got a new YouTube project right here. All I've got going on in here is in the home, in the custom code, I've uploaded a code sandbox script. This is actually the same code sandbox as this one, but we'll go through and delete all this before we get started. Um, in the description below, you'll, you'll see a link to download my ultimate Webflow resource library, and this is where I have the code that we're gonna use today. So first thing, we'll get this embed drop Dropbox video in Webflow, you could filter by video or by HTML. I think it's the only HTML one I have right now. And we'll just follow these instructions. So upload to Dropbox, that's done. Create a chain link, you'll get something like this. So let's do that. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. So we've got our share link. And now it should look like, change the dropbox.com to dl.dropboxusercontent.com. So I'm gonna open up a new tab and paste that there. And I'll take this and dl.dropboxusercontent.com. And I'm going to hit enter. And great, we see we get a video. Let's go back to here. So we done that, we've got that. And now we're going to add this little code to our page on an embed. Want to make sure, yep. So let's go ahead and drag the block. I'm actually gonna, this will be the wrap and we'll make it 100% and 100 viewport height. And now let's drag our embed in. Just drop that in there and then we're gonna paste, oh, I guess I paste, copy pasted the wrong thing. Copy. Great. Uh, and then URL goes here. Let's make sure that's what we need to do. Yep, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Maybe I can make those instructions a little more clear. And we'll drop that. And you should see it should load up automatically and just start playing. Uh, one thing you'll notice, I do have horizontal scroll and it's going without the outside of the bounds. So we're gonna fix that in just a second here. But I'll go over back here, add a dip block and give it a class WV video controller. You'll notice that class is up here as well. That's what we're gonna use to style this thing. I'm going to add a dip block and I'm actually gonna add a second dip block and give it that class name. Remove this dot right here. Go 
Grab that, wrap it in another div, and hide that one. So I'm going to hide this. And that's OK. We're still going to use this to style the video element. And now we're going to style it. So these are kind of the, the settings I like to, I usually use for like a full screen video type of thing. But you could do whatever you want. But let's go ahead. We'll set this wrap to relative first. So the video is relative to that. And then position absolute. We'll have it cover uh, the whole thing. We'll set object fit to cover. And we'll set it from the middle. And we'll set, let's see, 100% width and 100% height. No, we're looking pretty good there. And we don't have our horizontal scroll anymore, so that's great. Go back here. And now we're already at the control embedded video and audio section. So if your goal is just to get an autoplay video on Webflow, then congratulations, you've, you've made it as far as you need to go. I'm going to stop this just by, I don't want this to play over and over because I have strict bandwidth limits from Dropbox. And that's what I'm going to talk about now. Uh, this is not the last one anymore. I moved that. So the video will play while you work in Designer, which will eat away at your data limits. I break the URL and working just to prevent unnecessary data depletion, which is what I just did. Uh, the Dropbox free plan is limited to two gigabytes of storage, which is fine for a 76 megabyte video with 20 gigabytes of bandwidth and 100,000 downloads per day. So that's not very much. Make sure your client understands that, that you might easily exceed the free tier for Dropbox. When I'm doing stuff for clients, I usually use Amazon Web Services or AWS S3 storage buckets. The setup is a bit more involved because you have to set permissions and whitelist some IP addresses. Uh, it's really not that bad, but uh, I haven't seen a Webflow specific version of that yet. So uh, if there's interest, I can create an AWS, my AWS process one for that. Uh, you also get more, you get a much higher transfer limit, which is good. And then once it starts, I think Dropbox rolls you over into their 999 plan. This is just a forum post that I found. They don't actually like advertise their bandwidth very well. But let's go to Dropbox pricing. And I'll be putting uh, chapters in the bottom so you can skip this if you're not if you don't care about the pricing. Uh, anyway, so this is what I would look at to know kind of what what the bandwidth is and what what's available um, as far as if you, if you think your website might get some traffic and exceed that. Here's Amazon S3. Let's see where does where do they talk about? Why is it scrolled down here? Yeah, so the AWS free tier receive five gigabytes of Amazon S3 storage, twenty thousand get requests and 100 gigabytes of data transfer out each month. The nice thing about AWS that I really like is once it starts charging you, it's like 0 0.0063 cents per gigabyte or something. So it's it's on demand. The other option that I see a lot of folks use is Netlify, which has the same free tier as AWS, but it jumps to $55 um, as soon as you exceed that bandwidth. Where does it say that? Yeah, right here. So this happened with a client once, and it, it was fine, but I felt pretty bad about um, not anticipating that. I think it was also largely because uh, the video was on and playing while I was in designer and all that, so stupid me. But hopefully you can learn from my mistakes. That's why I'm making this video. All right, let's close out of these. And I think I've talked about everything I want to talk about here. Let's start making this video do what we want it to do. So control embedded video and audio. This is a JavaScript uh, file here, so I just separated them. And first we're going to look at controlling it with a click. And so step one is make sure this data attribute is on your video tag, WB embed video. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that, come back to my Webflow project. And in here, we've got the class, but I need to add this attribute. So WB embed video. And I'm going to save and let me, since I'm going to publish, I'm going to add this back. So it should download and play. I'm going to go ahead and publish this. Open that up. Let's see if I open up Inspector, I've got this WB embed video here. And that's what I'm going to use to select the element and do stuff with it in the custom code. So let's go ahead and, and actually it's paused right now because it's loading that, that code already. Something I'm going to do, I'm just going to secure this. Okay, sorry I'm jumping around a lot in here. Hopefully you can follow everything. 
And I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste all of this. And we'll delete all of this. OK. And save. And now I'm just going to walk through what's going on here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to get all the videos. Right now we just have one, but I'm going to show you once we add a second one, uh, the code will still work. And then we're going to loop through all the videos. And we're going to take a callback function that gets each video. And on initial load, we're just going to pause everything. You could get rid of this if you want it to just autoplay from the start. Again, it won't autoplay with audio. If you want it to audio, if you want the user to hear the audio, you need to make sure that they click on something. It's very browser specific and lots of different stuff. But as I was doing my testing here before, I did try messing with it a little bit. And you get, you'll get you get errors in the console from Chrome, uh, Firefox, and every, pretty much every browser will tell you that they want the user to click. So make sure your client understands that too. Anyways, we'll stick with this. So pause on the load. And then we'll add an event listener to the video so that when the user clicks, we'll trigger this function here. And all the function does is it checks if the video is paused. Then it's going to set the muted attribute to false. So the audio will make noise. And we will play the video. Otherwise, if the video is not paused, then we're just going to pause it. I put a little snippet right here. You could reset the video back to the start on click if you want to do that. But let's go ahead and look and see how it's working. So I'm going to just reload this. So we expect the video to be paused. And let's click. And it's playing, and I'm hearing it in my headphones. Maybe I'll like play a soundtrack or something in post video so you can hear music. Anyways, click again, and it's gone. Let's go ahead and add a second video. Just going to add this little L right here. There may be a better, more efficient way to do this, but we're not doing it today. And that's just going to be the same. And then let me copy and paste one more time, but I'll delete the video just so that we have some blank space here. I'll give it a um, like a nice blue color just so we can tell that we've reached the end. Go ahead and publish that. OK, I'm going to be back in the code for a while, so I'll go ahead and stop these. And let's refresh. OK, video is paused. Video is paused. If I click here, it's playing. I've got audio. If I click here, it's playing. I have two audio tracks now, which is really annoying. But I will just pause them both, just to show you that um, that's what you can do. And let's move on to scrolling. I think that's, yep. So this is the code block. We're using the Intersection Observer API. Uh, really cool. This is my first time actually learning this one. It, it's pretty new to JavaScript, but it has good support in modern browsers. And we will, where's our code? Yeah, we'll just overwrite all this and save. So this, this is the Intersection Observer code block. What we're doing is we're creating an Intersection Observer, saving it in a variable called Observer. And then this one gets a callback function. And it's going to, we're going to pass it the entries. And for each entry, we're going to say, hey, if the entry is intersecting, then we want to, that entry that's intersecting, we want to play it. And we're assuming it's a video here. You know, you could, this is actually pretty um, generic code, but we're, you know, it might make more sense to call this videos and videos. But I actually, plan to use this in the future as generic code anytime I want to look for something to be in the viewport. Anyways, I know it's going to be a video no matter what, just for this little code snippet. So otherwise, if it's not intersecting, we're going to pause it. And then threshold here by default is at zero. And that means the element will be totally off screen, no stop. But just so I can show you what it looks like, I'll make it 20%. And then one means once the element is fully on screen. And I just gave you some comments here. And then this is a very similar block of code to what we already did. We're going to select all the videos by that data attribute. And you'll know that both of them have it because we just copy pasted. So this one's got that, sorry, not that class, the WB embed video. Come back to our code. And we're just going to loop through all those videos. On initial load, we're going to pause. But then observer.observe video. So for each video, we're going to essentially attach this intersection observer to it. And that's what's coming through here in this function, the video. So when the video is intersecting, we're going to play. 
So we'll save that and refresh and let's see. So we load and our video is actually playing now because more than 20% of it is in the screen. But I'm not getting audio, which is expected. And I'm just gonna scroll down, scroll down. And you'll see once I'm at 20%, the video up top should stop and it does. And as we were scrolling, that second video started playing. And scroll down, scroll down, and it stops. Scroll back, it starts playing again. Scroll back, top video starts playing, the bottom one stops. Anyways, that's everything I wanted to cover today. Thanks again for tuning in. The resources will all be in the description box below. So just click that link and you can get all this code and a bunch of other code. I've got my pre-launch checklist in here, which is everything I do before releasing a video. Uh, a lot of cool kind of animation things and I'm just building onto this every day. So thanks again and talk to you soon, bye.